Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. Uh, I got a special guest here. Uh, we have Connor. How are you doing, bud? Doing great, great. Thank you. Uh, so here's the truth, guys. In true fashion, we just met two minutes ago. We, we don't know each other. I have followed him on social media a little bit, uh, but we got introduced from a good personal friend, Matthew Foster. And uh, if he's introducing us, we have to be uh, aligned. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. You are, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a real estate agent, yes or no? No. no, no, no. So you're, no. what do you do in real estate then? See, I don't, this is how much I don't know guys. We're just going to let yeah. him go. Yeah. So what, what's cool about that is exactly. I can, I can really start with a blank canvas here. And so, um, 10 years ago in Northern California and San Francisco, Silicon Valley, uh, I started working at a real estate tech company, uh, ended up stumbling into another real estate tech company called Trulia was there pretty early uh, before IPO, before the Zillow merger. I've been now with Zillow Group, fast forward 10 years, and the, for really a, a large portion of that time, the focus has been um, in, the, in the front lines and trenches with the top real estate agents, teams, brokers across the country, and really trying to dissect and understand and obsess over exactly what are these people doing to sell as many homes as possible. And, and of course, a huge part of that has been you know, through the Zillow platform and, and, and is through that. But um, over time, it's become such a holistic understanding or view or, or still I consider myself a student of what are the best in real estate doing uh, as a strategy. I love that. And like, I wish that was my job because I would, <laughs> I would just, I, I love I, psychology major, didn't graduate, of course, but bartender for 20 years. So you might as well call it a psychology uh, degree. So when you, I noticed on your social media, there's a lot of teaching, there's a lot of uh, giving back value and, and stuff like that. When you're studying people and what you're doing, because there are agents out there that, you know, they're just, they just crush it. I mean, and then you have Frank next to him who can't get a sale, you know, yeah. now I believe, and this is just my personal opinion. I believe that mindset is everything. I believe that. Um, you know, the reason I started the podcast, you're constructing a life kind of set up to, to be the best version of yourself day in and day out. And, and that doesn't happen by just making money. Um, it happens by you know, taking care of your body, eating well, family life, et cetera, et cetera. So when you see um, agents that are at the top field, what are you seeing from an out overall point of view on, on what they're bringing to the table? Yeah, first part I agree with what you said is just a hundred percent leaning into change. So um, not a, not even so much uh, embracing or willingness, but seeking it, disrupting themselves. So a lot of that stuff is so true across many industries. But I mean, that's like almost like a foundational given what to what you had said around mindset. Um, but I, I think what where I am really getting interested and have been interested over the recent years because ten years ago. Uh, what the best we're doing is just massively different from to today. And so um, I guess without giving that whole scope, what, what, giving you a more tactical answer or focus to me is just the internet. So executing on the internet um, as sort of simple or basic as that sounds uh, to me is the difference. And so there are still plenty of agents that quite honestly are selling hundreds of homes a year on the back of the momentum they've had from whatever it was from magazines to doorsteps to knocking to cold calling to name it, but the people that aren't doing, I think, uh, what's, what's, you know, where most of us are living, operating, experiencing, um, you know, products and services, which is on the internet through the internet, or at least highly leveraged with the internet, um, then, you know, they're probably not going to be the best in the future. So that's the trend I'm seeing is the, the agents and the businesses, the small teams that are executing online, uh, is, is the strategy. Yeah, and I think it's it's one of those things, especially during what what we're going through currently and what we have been going through, uh, you know, almost a, a forced movement towards the internet. So maybe some of the old guard are, are getting on or figuring out Instagram stuff like that. 
But it is wild to me that me and you are having this conversation. You're on a podcast. We met through Instagram, you know, and so like you're you're connecting the dots of how everybody is connected now. Uh, yeah. It's merely about getting over your own fears and just asking, right, or just presenting yourself to somebody. And I think as a newer agent, I would imagine you kind of have to get out of your own way a little bit and and just kind of let it flow. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, we all like communication has changed. The best I think in in real estate and in the past and in sales is, has been the best communicator. And it's just now that instead of door knocking, instead of one to one on the phone, instead of what the way we used to sort of uh, you know efficiently or maximize communication, that's changed in to being on the internet. And so uh, that's a huge part of my own personal journey. I, what I do with with uh, you know within Zillow is I work with some of the best in real estate, and so um, I I have been I've felt not only grateful and excited to, for everything that's happening there, but have felt like if I can somehow just click record on some of these conversations, maybe there's one person in real estate that might find two seconds of value and, and, and it's, it, it's worth that. And, and that's kind of turned into this, uh, you know, you know, sort of uh, obsession that I've had with continuing to scale communication, continuing to understand how we're all evolving, um, you know, with our phones and, and uh, through, through the internet. So it's something that I can happily drill more into, but to me, when when I talk when I look at that for realtors or real estate pros, because uh, this is still I think we're talking about pretty vague high level. Like w- the way I look at that one click deeper is you've got what in uh, in marketing is referred to as like lead generation or uh, purchasing leads or you know in some old cases it's like cost per click right and um, that kind of like measurable direct response approach. Um, which is largely the approach on Zillow's platform, right? Um, we have millions of people coming to the site and that's what they're doing. But the other side that I think is also just as interesting and just as where I think as much business is going to be generated in the future is uh, trust. It's brand, it's referrals. It's, it's, I want to work with Austin because I know and I like him and my brother used him to buy a home. So, and he knows that neighborhood because he's lived there. He's helped 40 people buy and sell there he knows the best taco shop and, and everything that's happening in the school district there. So I want to work with Austin. And, and so to me, um, there's kind of those two buckets in terms of sales and what's maybe a little bit more top of funnel awareness and trust. Thousand percent. I use myself on the podcast because it's easy to just poke at me. What I'm doing in the process of right now behind the scenes is defining who I am as a coach and, and kind of my avatar and, and, and my client, right? But getting more clear on my voice, right? And I think you have to separate judgment from it because I'm not the typical coach. I'm not the guy that wears the sweater and sits in the corner of the AC office. Like, I'll get dirty with you. You know, I was a drug, I, I had a drug addiction, I was an alcoholic. You know, I'll get real with you if you yeah. need me to get real. And so, but it's funny because the more I tap into that, the more I feel great about what I'm doing. And I think as an agent or any, what we're talking about, just be who you are. You don't have to be anything for your clients. And if you do that, I think you will attract the right type of clients that you're looking for. And there's so many niches with inside real estate that I would imagine that's probably what you tell the guys a lot. Just, just be you like go after your people. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a video. One of the, the agents who I work with, who I have a ton of respect for sells hundreds of homes a year had said video is really exposing all of us. It's, and especially the ones who are their authentic selves, like you had just said, they're the ones that I think will attract the type of clients that want to work with them and most align with, you know, their beliefs and their trajectory. And so I think, uh, you know, I think it's, I took that whole video is exposing people really, I think, uh, you know, in a serious way in that it's, it's going to happen, I think for everyone, like, you know, we can't really, the internet, when I talk about executing on the internet, like you just can't hide from it. And so either video is going to show who you are or, or people are going to see who you're not, that you have nothing to say, you know? So it's, I think it's something that's important. We're going to see a lot more of this kind of, you know, interaction in the future. I love it. 
I love it. I'm already excited about the first part of the conversation, but let's talk about what I really care about because nobody that I talk to in real estate or in the world, we ever talk about real estate. We talk about family life. We talk about mindset, just health, Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about how you've cultivated what I believe from the little videos I've seen is really uh, what me and Maddie A call uh, a whole life, you know, you're, you're a whole life millionaire. Um, you know, I see you with your kids. I see you with your wife. You're adding value at every turn. So talk about the journey on, on kind of cultivating that, that, that mindset around, you know, how you approach your life. Yeah. I, uh, so really ever since I was younger, I've, I've always had this sort of, uh, competitive love for sports, um, uh, play about, played about every sport growing up. And at the same time was I, like one of the smaller guys on the field or on the court. And so um, I think in a way I, I was fortunate to maybe have the right amount of friction over the years that uh, made me both angry enough to, to have ambition uh, to a level that I really still have today and, and the amount of hunger, um, but, but, but also I guess the amount of patience and, and uh, discipline that I, I feel like I, I want to have in order to get to where I, I want to go. And so it's a, uh, when you, when you talk about like, you know, leadership for the family and things like that, or, or trying to bring value to people around me, it's, it's something where, um, I, I truly am trying to have such a long-term, you know, play the, play the long game, positive impact that I'm thinking about, um, you know, way less transactional moments than I used to when I was younger in terms of like making money or doing short-term things, but instead trying to think about more of a impact in, in my why. And, and and just to not talk about shorter people, but just in context, meaning I love to work uh, with guys who have been, this sounds so weird to say out loud, but I love to work with guys that have had a drug addiction or they've been to prison. Uh, you know, it's a chip it, on the shoulder. Thousand percent. Right. And I would imagine that in school, you know, you had to work harder. You had to put yourself out there more. I would imagine, you know, there's a lot of people in life that shy away from harder things or, or, or I can't do it. I'm going to stay in my comfort zone, but mm-hmm. I, I, I would venture to guess that's probably kind of what made you who you are today. Right. Uh, a, a huge. And, and it's something that quite honestly, even only in the last few years have, have my, uh, have my wife and I started to talk about this because, uh, so I have three kids, five, four and one years old. And that sort of, uh, creates moments of reflection where you, you kind of, you know, start to see yourself as a mirror in a way, uh, or, or it, it, the kids, you know, will sort of, uh, you know, whether it's innately or what you teach them, you know, you, you kind of start to reflect on, on why pe- we, you know, we are, why we are and how we behave, how we behave. And so I, it's definitely created, I think, a, a, a positive, you know, chip on my shoulder in that, um, it's made me hungry, but it, I'm sure it, 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 ha- it has its limitations, which I've uh, touched on as well. <laughs> Amen. And see, that's the key. You just gave the golden rule because I have had everybody asking me my entire life, when are you going to lose the chip on your shoulder? <laughs> but, but I thought it was the only reason I was six, whatever you want to call it. Success yeah. is a BS yeah. word, but I thought it was the only reason. And it wasn't until I stripped away and realized that it was just me. That, yeah. that, got, that got me here, that changed my whole mindset on it. But I agree, used in the right way, it can fuel you, but it can't fool you forever. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's a, it's a, as long as you have like a true, honest sort of a, I think, view of, of or awareness or self-awareness, right? Like, like I'm, I'm genuinely happy today as well. Like I, I like, I'm telling you everything that I have in my life between the health and, and, and the wealth and, and my kids and, and the relationships, like, uh, it's, I, I'm truly, truly happy where I'm at and, the, and, and at the same time and, and have this sort of intense hunger for the ambition. So I think it's, it's a, it's a chip on the shoulder, um, that I've, uh, sort of lo- learned to love, I guess. A thousand percent. And because of that, you know, I think me and you have the same mindset, you know, what I tell everybody is the, the 2019 version of myself is not acceptable in 2020. And the 2020 is not acceptable in 2001. What I'm having, what's a constant daily battle for me is to be present in the moment and to not always search for the, for the next thing. Cause you know, I like you am, am more of a legacy play. So when I switched everything 
mm-hmm. and I stopped worrying about the money. Uh, and I just said, you know, and I tell everybody that works for me, I just got off the call with my producer for the podcast. Let's just not overthink this. Let's just, let's just do right. Imperfect action leads to great results. Like, yeah. and once we adopted that personality, I feel like there's a lot of pressure off and it's kind yeah. of like, I'm just being me, you know? It's so much pressure. Number one, like it's so much pressure off when you start to kind of lean into or embrace this idea that like, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect and that it's the, it's an infinite, I don't know if you know, uh, Simon Sinek, but it's an mm-hmm. infinite, infinite uh, game. It's sort of this mindset that like, you know, you're just going to learn by doing, not like you're going to hit some level and then you'll know everything you want to know. You're, you're, you're going to constantly want to level up. And like, um, so recently I've, I've been doing more like Instagram lives or I've been doing other things that kind of put me in a discomfort zone. Um, even talking more about mindset, I'm happy to talk about anything between you know, fitness to cold showers. Like I'm very mm-hmm. into, uh, you know, I, just, pra- I, I think you even had a, like, I, like I really look into like, like practicing stoicism. So there, there's all kinds yeah. of stuff that I, I, I'm into when it comes to mindset. Funny. I just picked up a couple of those books. I've been doing some Buddhists. I, I just started the cold showers a month ago. I'm loving it. Um, I already signed up for three Ironmans. I've never done one. So, I mean, I think that's putting, pushing myself out of the comfort zone. What's but, your cold? What's your cold shower situation? Sorry, real quick. Uh, I just, uh, I was on the West Coast. I just started doing it because uh, a couple guys I know, they've been doing but it forever. You turn it, but like what exactly are you doing? You turn it on I cold just jump in. I just jump in for cold shower for like, I don't really have like a routine or anything. I just jump in, cold shower, wake up first thing in the morning, uh, and then I'll meditate or go work out first thing. Is, do you have like an actual routine? No, I mean, it's not like super routine. It's mm-hmm. just, uh, I think just the... Like, especially if someone is not familiar with this, maybe mm-hmm. the way the way I describe it is sure. uh, even if you're in a warm shower and start with a hot shower, just the conscious decision to step into what's super icy, cold, and mm. borderline unbearable, you're you're basically facing your fight or flight moment. And and you know, you you, you go through that response of catching your breath, of losing your mind. You you actually lose your mind for a moment, but then get incredibly focused on exactly where you are you're 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 so present that you're not thinking about the the what ifs of tomorrow or the stresses from yesterday you're you're truly truly in the most present moment possible um and and practicing those i think uh moments uh where you can endure you know that that sort of pain or that sort Mm -hmm. of uh biological response but overcome it I think it's just a good, it's like, to me, it's as, it's like as healthy as working out. So I like those little things like cold exposure. Thousand percent. And that's why I love the Ironman training because it can be one, but more importantly, like we had a long training session today with a buddy of mine that came up and he's better than me straight up. I'll just tell you, uh, my, and just, I'll use it for context. My average, uh, five miles on the bike is like 20 minutes. Uh, the first 15, we did 17. I was dying. I was like, I was pissed. My hamstrings were like, well, guess what we did on the way back? 14, 14, 15. And I'm thinking to myself like, what? But like, that was another gear. Like I was like, no, we're just going to go. And when you constantly challenge yourself, you'd be surprised every time you hit those marks, you're just, you're just stacking on good positive results. And yeah. I think I think the thing that's not talked about enough in, in just real estate life and in general is that momentum is a secret weapon. And yeah. and and when you get rolling, doesn't it just feel like everything like starts slowing your way? But that's you know what I'm saying? Man, momentum momentum to me is such the game. You had talked about even being better each week or better each month and like this 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 concept of like, you know, infinite game and just somehow getting a little bit stronger and just building and building and building. I think uh um, momentum is like you'd said, that's like, uh, that, that, that should almost be the goal because no matter how big or small you are, um, it's, it's really just about building momentum from, from where you're at today and, and toward the direction of, of where you want to go. Thousand percent. And so how do you, as a father, and this is what I ask all the time, how do you manage, like you want to be successful and you want to provide value and you have business, you have a big job, but you have three kids and you have a wife. So how do you balance, you know, I think the hardest thing in life for people is if I, everybody I coach, it's boundaries. Mm-hmm. They, yeah, I know I'm the worst at it. I've gotten a lot better where I just like, Hey, it's not happening. And I think that more no's lead to 
bringing up your value. And I also think that it allows you to feel more creative. So how do you as a father separate your big job from, from all the stuff you're trying to do uh, with your family? Yeah. Like the first thing is ton of that just like I consider myself again, still a student going through that journey, but like um, the big, the two words that come to mind for me that are the most important, I think at when I'm trying to get better at this is, is vulnerable communication. And so I think whether it's, Hey, like with my wife, like here, I'll, I'll do this right now. I'll be vulnerable and communicate what, what, what is going on. I've been spending so much time during quarantine, making sure that, that work is, is continuing to execute if, and both grow and I'm, I'm, as well as my, my personal content, which I want to be, um, I, I mean, I do video editing at midnight sometimes mm-hmm. and then, and then I work out seven days a week, not incredibly heavy or incredibly Ironman level intense. Um, but, um, seven days a week, I try to get some level of physical movement and then, yeah, I have three young kids. And so most recently, um, uh, my wife and I were both saying, it's like, Hey, like, we try to take inventory. You just talked about that. We were taking inventory and I was falling short, just, just straight up vulnerable. I couldn't try and make an, ex- I shouldn't try and make an excuse or talk about why something is the way it is or it isn't, but objectively assessing and looking at the truth of what is or it isn't, whether that's, I want to be a better father by doing this, or I want to be more successful by working on that. I think you have to uh, just vulnerably communicate that not only with, uh, you know, um, of the people in our lives, but with ourselves, I think is what's most important being truth, truthful with ourselves, um, in that most vulnerable way. But, uh, you know, I, I recently posted also about how ego is the enemy and it's the hardest thing for us to avoid in this conversation, I think, because we want it to be a certain way. We, we feel like it is a certain way, but, um, it's, you know, harder sometimes to, to see the objective truth. And for one second, I'm going to speak to all the men, and you can DM me later why I have reference to this. Men, your wife, your girlfriend, she is not asking you to drop every damn thing you're doing. All she's asking you to do is just what he said. Be vulnerable and say, I'm sorry I missed the mark. I will get better. Now, yeah. rewind that. Play it again. That getting your ego out of the conversation, she's just asking you to acknowledge that you have been failing in that department. That's it. Yeah, and so tying that to you know to your question to really like for for me how I how I look at that then or how that takes the pressure off kind of in what we had said is that like like if if I, I we have all these important buckets of our life between again our our own health and our and our our goals and aspirations our relationships and so I think it's just a. It's just a constant taking inventory and then strategically, objectively, you know, deciding what is the most right next step in order to get from A to B. And so if you, you know, it's, it's, I think it's just about breaking it down. The hard part is, is certainly being vulnerable. Sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, I, 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 you know, my buddy in Arizona, Templeton, you know, he's got like three kids. He's I mean, doing so many deals, but he's still, like super present and it, 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 it's great to see that it can be done and there are seasons in your life. And I think you as a person, just as a me personally, I have to notice what seasons I'm in. And there's some months where I'm like, I'm working all the time, but not like it's not turned up to 10. And then there's some months where mm-hmm. it's turned up to 13, but you have to step back and you have to say, you know, am I, am I really giving everybody the needs they need? But by doing that, I think, like Matt, Matty always says, like dirty yes is like make sure when you're committing to something that it's really something you want to do, and, and it's okay to say no. And right. I think that's I think that's really important. Right, and that's that ties so much into that vulnerability because if we if, if we want it to feel or sound a certain way, then we'll make it so. So I think we have to truly, um, even if it means I don't sound like the person I always wanted to or pictured or this or that. I think I think the vulnerable communication is is the unlock to then getting to that place that that. thousand percent and something in the last eight months I've done, and it's really hard to do this and I won't do it all the time, but if for some reason I'm in the wrong headspace and I can't properly show up to a phone call the way I need to, I'll reschedule. And it's just, and that's a really hard thing to do, especially if it's somebody you really want to talk to a bigger dog or something, but you, but if by showing up to that call in the wrong mindset, you're, you're doing more damage than good. 
Yeah. And I mean, and like, look, I even think even, even showing up to the, to the thing and then just like breaking down and being like, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Austin as a strategy, like, like my shit's falling apart here. And like, like, you know, what, what should I do there? Like, I actually think that that's the vulnerability and the communication that people will respect it. And, and, or if they don't, then we're, we're probably not long-term most meant to align with you. So that's I think er, 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 everywhere that I look at it, both with, you know, really close relationships in my life to, to business, but especially with ourselves, I think that the honesty. Thousand percent. So, uh, you, you, you work with a lot of top agents you do. So let's, a lot of my audience is 24 to 36 newer in the real estate space. Let's spend the next while talking about tips that you can give from all the people you've interviewed and stuff like that. If they're a newer investor, newer real estate agent, what are the, the, the quote unquote best things to do when you're, when you're getting off in the business? Yeah, I love it. So this is, this is where I truly, truly geek out. So like I first, I, first of all, uh, I like, I love talking strategy and sort of get, getting into the details of it. So, um, so I think number one, it's, it's actually making every single day content, collaborating, making every single day. So I can't stress enough the the content creation and the volume and so like if you even look what, at what i've been doing like yeah i mean everyone you're interacting with or thinking about or doing whether it's um i've i've been I've invested in tesla stock i i really like this burger chain that i think executes really well i've done content written pictures and video about both of those as well as real estate as well as i've written about my principles for parenting my kids and 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 how i navigate you know, what, what the, my approach to parenting. So I think it's the, the, you know, people sometimes get too locked into what to make, but making, 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 creating every single day. Like you just, we all are living. And so specifically what I mean is, is content is scaling communication is bringing value to people on, you know, on the mobile phone, just cause um, that's the only, that's where everyone lives and that's where you're going to build relationships. And then that's where you're going to create opportunities for you to do the thing, sell the home or whatever it is. But um, I, that to me is the first thing is just getting in the habit of volume making every day. Thousand percent. And you know, Chris doesn't let me look at the numbers for the podcast, which I think is great because it doesn't really matter. And you don't know uh, what you don't know. And you don't like, and I agree with you. It, it, like people text me all the time, like, dude, you are pumping out the content. And I'm like, we're just getting warmed up. And yeah. so it's like, like, I can't control how the message lands for you in that moment in that day. But, but, but just like, and, and Ulysses says this a lot, like just being in the front of their mind is more valuable than what the actual content is. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's to me, the formula is building attention and building trust equity leads to you creating, again, opportunities, outcomes, influence, whatever it is, but attention plus trust. And so the hard part is people backed into our ego conversation. Like, you know, there's all kinds of ways that you can buy fake followers or get fake engagement or make it look like you're getting attention or make it look like someone trusts you. But I think the hard part is actually... Um, you know, cause I, I so much like that you, you, your head down tunnel vision on creating and making. Um, and I have this obsession with like also paying attention to how that, how your message resonates with, with, with the listeners. I do think matters, you know, I think, I think you want, you, what's, what's, it's, it's not 50, 50, it's a hundred percent being the most authentic Austin as possible talking about the things that are real vulnerable mm-hmm. in you. And, um, like being strategic about how you get that message to as many people as possible. And so, um, I think, uh, I think like when we, you know, more specifically, like the way that you're chopping it up on Instagram makes a ton of sense. The way that you're making micro edits with captions, headlines, that kind of stuff makes sense. Um, I, I haven't checked out if you're distributing on LinkedIn or an email or, or, but, but the point is like, um, learning contemporary communication is, I think, is I think a huge part of getting your actual message distributed. Yeah. And when we launched uh, like six weeks ago, the greatest, I knew it was done. And he's like, look, the, get the guests are great, but like you're ridiculous because you just call yourself out on everything. And I was like, okay, we're good. Like we're good. Like 
I'm authentic. I'm not trying to be anybody I want because one of my big things that I'm on right now, I'm on my soapbox. I'm, I'm going to shout it from the rooftops. I believe that everybody in dates and music, like social settings, business settings, I think that they show up from a context. And how does my boss want me to act? How does this girl think that I should act? Should I be the gentleman? And I'm like, can't you just be yourself? Yeah. Like you can't control. And, and, and so on social media, it's easy to portray a certain lifestyle. But for me, I show you the good, the bad, the indifferent. Um, you know, I mean, it's I don't want to. Yeah, no, I think yeah. what's so I think what's so important here, and this is like a really key part of this strategy to, to your original question, like, because if you can, as much as you can untie what, what, what you're doing in terms of a content strategy and communication and biz dev and relationships, as much as you can untie that to like the need to pay bills this week, this month, or the stress of revenue, um, then, then it becomes, then the authenticity becomes so easy. Like, mm -hmm. like it be like, if you're truly, if you can truly find a way to keep your head above water, hold your, like hold your breath, pay the bills, whatever it is you need to be doing. And then, and, and at the same time, like, um, I, you know, for a real estate pro in that position, um, that's putting out content and making this, um, as much as you can do that, then I think you'll, you'll stay authentic. You'll get real trust. And one of the things I've seen that's great is that I just personally believe that everybody doesn't want to do, they just don't want it that bad. Like yeah. I know, I know guys new in the business that are crushing it, that go buy dinners for Keller Williams, you know, lunches or like, you know, these little things that, that you're just like, you know, I'm not going to waste my time in that. I'm not seeing the ROI, but that's it's not about That's, that's yeah. what it is. They haven't untied the sales revenue to their to, to, to the strategy. So thousand percent, as much as it's connected, we all know it is directly connected. Um, but as it, but it's sort of this weird, like, you know, people can see and feel when you're selling, um, versus, mm -hmm. gi versus giving more value than you're asking for. Thousand percent. I had to learn, I had to learn the hard way. I got taught by some mentors that like, Hey, don't ask for that. <laughs> you know, yeah. you can, you can provide. And so for me, what I do in, in kind of the joke around, my got my business partners and stuff is my philosophy is have plane will network. So I'll literally just fly in for a meetup in like Detroit and like people are like, what the hell is this guy doing from Texas? And I'm like, and then y'all don't know that I got like six clients from that meeting. Right. And so like, my thing is like, how bad do you want it? It's a simple, like there's a lot of 20 to 29 year olds that don't have a girlfriend. They don't have a pet. They don't have three kids like you have. Uh, they don't have multiple businesses like me that you have to, you know, you have to make sure are running. And how bad do you want it? Look in the mirror. Like during quarantine, I've read, I've listened to 32 books, taught myself some Spanish and started two businesses and a podcast. So my question is, is like, what's your excuse? Like, you know, like, we, do you really want to be here? Like, that's what I, you know, that's what I want to ask him. We get what we tolerate, not what we want. And so I think it's exactly hitting the nail on the head of what, what you said. Like, it's just a difference of, you know, people, um, you know, truly wanting what, truly doing what it is that they want. Yeah. And I 100% agree. And I know sitting across from you that you put it down, like you work, you, you're, you're providing value. Like I look at like your followers on Instagram or somewhere around mine. And I agree with you, like you can pay for them. And I've been approached and, you know, Hey, well, I can do this for you. And I'm like, you know what? I'd much rather do the journey because I know that through that, I'm going to become somebody that I like and mm -hmm. it's not going to be something like fake. I just can't it's, do it. If it's, it's all about knowing your why, like you're, you're, you're the reason you're doing it or the purpose. Like if, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're truly trying to have impact, then I think that's, that's the approach. Thousand percent. So, what if I had to put you up against the wall? What are you think the next, let's say, two three years? What are you looking to do? You're doing all these Instagram lives with all these agents. Like, what are you seeing? What are you seeing trends in the business, tech wise, and, and just kind of where the market's heading on that stuff like that? Yeah. So, I think we're gonna see right. You know, the the the, the old Pareto rule where the the eighty twenty where I, th I think some of the best of the best are just going to continue to execute and get better and eat more of the market share. And so, 
you know, there's like over a million people with a real estate license that, you know, don't sell a lot of business, but the, the small, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of agents and teams, I think are going to, are going to basically keep winning more and more. Um, and, and then, and then we're also ha- going to have this turnover and shift and opportunity of emerging, rising, emerging, uh, sort of stars who like I've seen it in Northern California where agents are still in this stage where they're selling, let's say closer to like 10 to 15 homes a year, which is nice in the, in that area, that price point. But like, um, but like they're executing on the things that are happening, you know, four years from now. So I just know, you know, in the future, they're going to be, they're going to be winning. If they're, if they're winning online today, then I know four years from now, uh, that gap is going to be a lot different than it is today. And so that, that to me, it keeps coming back to like executing on the internet um, and leaning into what, you know, everything that means. And isn't, and isn't that the rub? Because I would say that 60% of people, maybe it's bigger, won't follow through with that because they want that now. And what they don't understand is that, you know, my friend's dad, who's an agent here has been crushing it for 20 years and he just uses email and, you know, but like they can't see the big vision. Like you could be, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm in a, in a weird way, like, and like, you know, and first of all, like, uh, you know, all, all health and safety wishes, good wishes to everyone. But you like, do you remember that chip on my shoulder? Like, yeah. so like, so like, I'm, I'm excited, you know, yeah. like, like, cause the winners are going to win and the losers are going to lose and it's going to be fun to wa- watch it play out. Thousand percent. And it's like, if you're truly of an unstoppable mindset, it doesn't really matter what comes your way. It doesn't really matter what, coronavirus happens it doesn't really matter if there's another virus it doesn't really matter if the whole real estate game changes you're going to succeed and you're going to find a way and i think i only want to be around people that are doers i don't want to be around people that make excuses i can't i can't stand yeah and 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 then to me like what's what's so important that goes with this because i do think this is a strategy everyone should be doing but having having like a, a real understanding with why is I think just so important with again vulnerably answering honestly with ourselves because um, I do think if people are listening to this and thinking they're going to launch their podcast or do their their micro video content or whatever it is because they have this you know sort of four-year dream and there's all this pressure I, th- I think that's that's sort of a set up to fail I think the the real the real real strategy that I like about this is that if you, if you, if you almost reframed it in your mind, which I'm sure you're almost doing Austin is like, is you get to just meet a bunch of people and pick their brain and learn from them without them, like either charging you money or without you ever, you know, doing anything other than getting to do like choose who you get to pick and have fun in the places that you want to have. And so it's, uh, then you already won. So that that to me is is the approach. This is my own mastermind. It's awesome. Exactly. I had an interview with a dude the other day, Chris. He's like a new friend. He's got crazy multifamilies. I'm like, this is great. But <laughs> true, but true story. I was in Austin recently. Good friend of mine, huge investor. Where I run his Airbnbs for him. He said something to me that will forever change my life. Two things. He said. He said, be careful when you. And I'll use it pun intended. Be careful when you're constructing your life that you might be living the life that you always wanted right now. And don't be seeking something else. And I wait, holy crap. Yeah. Like I, this is what I fought for for 20 years and I'm here and I'm not paying attention that I'm here. And so if I'm here, right, if I'm here, then who cares what it looks like dollar wise, how many people listen, you know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't really matter because this is what I wanted. I wanted to do real estate. I wanted to connect people. I love to help people. Okay. I'm doing all those things. So if I just live in that, then the rest of the stuff doesn't matter and it'll happen over time. It's, it's so cool. And it's so true. And I think if people can even figure that part out before even thinking about content or communicating or documenting, like um, I think for the longest time I I was so in details trying to envision and, and do feel grateful for now that I get to work with top real estate pros, learn from them and talk strategy um, I get to, you know, before COVID was traveling around and meeting all kinds of people. And, and so I, I felt fortunate to just at that point start sharing and documenting that to where 
again, there was no pressure. I, I basically didn't care if I got zero views or, or a thousand views. And um, that to me is the best way to like remove any kind of insecurity or uh, and happens to be, you know, good for the strategy. I, you know, as you, as you meet people, like I'll share this on LinkedIn and some, someone else will f- come into your circle and that just leads to, to, you know, more relationships, more value. Thousand percent. And you have to, you know, you have to just remove it. And I mean, it's like what I have to get over to, and it doesn't matter how many I've done of these, <laughs> I've recorded like 30, 25, but I have to get out of my own head on like, Hey, like, why is anybody listening? I just have to get out. And, and the reason I'm telling you all this is because this is a daily thing for me. Don't think I come on here and it's like, Hey, I'm just haphazard. Like, no, I'm nervous, like at all times. And I'm playing chess in my mind, you know, trying to give y'all the most value. But when I remove, you know, like he said, this is the second thing he said, I just remembered. He said, why does it, he said, why does it fucking matter how many people listen? Because do you want to do a podcast? I go, yeah, I've always wanted to do one. Okay. Well, great. Who gives a shit? (laughs) Yeah. I, uh, I heard someone say a gut check that I like in this approach is let's let's even it's not even an if let's pretend it's a rule no one gets to listen you get zero listeners no one gets to know what you're up to mm-hmm. now what now what are you going to do so you don't get to promote it on instagram you don't you don't get to show people the books you're reading like you, you, you like no one knows so now what are you going to do with your time and your energy and i think mm-hmm. that's often a, a good gut check to really be honest with ourselves yeah. around why am i doing what i'm doing Dude, that just made me uncomfortable. That was awesome. <laughs> hey, but true story. You'll love this. So I have a friend out in Scottsdale. Her name's Mara. She's amazing. We do Ironman training together. She has a rule with me, and I think it's a game changer for me. I haven't shared it with anybody. So think about this because I'm going to take you somewhere. She does not allow me when I'm describing uh, a vacation or a moment. She does not allow me to show her the picture. She makes yeah. me describe it to her. I like that. And here's what's crazy about that. Now, when I've gone out into experiences, now I know I have to explain it. So I am fully taking it in instead of just taking a quick picture. Because everybody looks at your pictures and they're like, eh. But if you can take somebody to that place, holy crap. You know that? Yeah, yeah completely. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a great way to sort of force force the brain to go through that thinking process like i i uh, i actually like when i mentioned tesla and in and out burger if you're familiar with them mm-hmm. so like that's the burger chain like these are just two companies that like i obsessed over as as I'm, i actually don't own a tesla car so i have a 2001 tacoma but mm-hmm. I, I i have tesla shares i'm obsessed with the strategy the company i was basically annoying my friends for years about it and 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 so easily that it was a piece of content that I, I think I could, I could talk about. And so it's this, uh, th- this authenticity, this idea of like, again, yeah, if it, it not for, I mean, it, it, it's, it's tough because I, I said it earlier, it's not 50, 50. I think it's a hundred percent the things that make you, you. So like be authentic, you with sort of no hedge and a hundred percent, you know, are like being mindful of like, uh, is this, uh, is this upsetting people? Is this exciting people? Is it inspiring people? Is is no one engaging with it, or do a lot of people engage with this kind of content in this format in these places? So um, I sort of have this equal curiosity for for the strategy of the distribution as much as the the message that's being distributed. A thousand percent. Thank goodness I don't have to deal with that because that would just <laughs> go. I go down a rabbit hole. Yeah, oh yeah. But, but but what's exciting is that I think you know as I'm sitting here talking to you, I, I'm becoming more comfortable and and like I'm we're really aligned on a lot of stuff. I think that what we're gonna see is this type of content, this honest, open stuff, and, and that's what. And, and you know, I, look, I have a soft spot in my heart for women. It's rough out there. It's different. The external forces are different. But when you can remove judgment from what you're putting out there, and that's what I tell all the clients that I coach, like, just just put it out there. Who cares yeah. how it lands? If you're going to buy a sweater, talk about your damn sweater. Who cares? Like, mm-hmm. Because I would imagine that, that, that what your kids are seeing is like, you know, maybe they're not watching the content, but they're watching like daddy cares about what he's doing. And like, that's what people, it was Aaron Wagner, this guy I follow on social media. And he said, right when the pandemic started, he said, hey, 
you idiots. He said, do you understand that the way that you react to this, your kids will have to deal with 20 years from now? And what he's saying is if you run around the house and you act like a crazy person, your kids are <laughs> going to have anxiety issues and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, like, you know, so I, I'm really into how our kids learn and mm-hmm. uh, and and just this idea, like I have all kinds of feelings actually about school and, and education and, and things like that that we could get into. But um, there's this uh, there's this video I, I'm pulling up to basically show you guys that is this idea that kids are kids are copycats. So mm-hmm. the best the best the I think the most you know w- the ways that they consume or learn is just by mimicking. Mm-hmm. And so exactly what you had said. I mean, it's not it's even way less of what we tell them is happening or or how they should handle it, they're, they're simply just going to look at the leaders and then sort of behave like that. And- thousand percent. And I had on a previous podcast uh, a couple episodes ago, Aaron and Moose Stegi, and I absolutely love what they're doing. They, the five-hour school week, they wrote a book, uh, the homeschooling and stuff like that. It, my, wife just- and my wife and I follow, follow uh, Five Hour, and we, we are doing homeschool as well. Yeah, we, were doing, and- we were doing homeschool before the pandemic. I love that. And so I think it's great. And I would put a rich dad, poor dad book in a two year old's hand if I could. And he understand it because that's how much I care. Because I feel like one of the things, one of my big whys is I want to create a school between high school and college because I was lost. Uh, And I think that a lot of kids are lost. And, you know, what, what, why are you shoving a curriculum down your kids that doesn't get them ready for life. And, you know, you're finding that Aaron said, I was like, what is kind of fulfillment do you get when your kids touch the ocean in Portugal? And he goes, you can't beat it. And yeah. like, dude, he's got a 12 year old that has like three businesses. I'm not joking. Like it's like, it's for <laughs> like, real. Like this is, this one's a real big passion for, for uh, my wife and I, we, so yeah, we we're, we we're homeschooling um, way before the pandemic and plan to, um, we, I don't even necessarily l- like love to throw the, the, the term schooling in it because sure. it's one of those where like, um, even as you said, the instant, even as you said, create a school, I, there's a part of me that was defensive and a part of me that's like, you, you, you are, you can, you're doing mm-hmm. it now. You know, you said sure. there's an, eight, you're an 18, 20, 30 year old that's listening. They're learning that to me is the new school. Mm-hmm. I mean, my, wow. my school. Like that's, my power, school, that's powerful, dude. I, you just blew my mind with that. That's it, super it, powerful. It, it, it is. Cause and it's not even like, because, uh, like I, I, I think it's motivating in a way, like truly not even that. I just think internet has disrupted education as much as any other industries right now. But information right now is, is, is everywhere. We can learn from anyone everywhere all the time. It's just a matter of now distilling that or how we learn it. So like even, to a degree, as much as I like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and there are, there are so many books that I, I think I'll be sort of cramming down my, you know, my, my kids' uh, curriculum. But um, I, I think I have to, in a way, like let go of sort of any curriculum. I don't know if you've uh, read, read the book. It's somewhere over here, but Free to Play, because um, I think we got that from the five-hour recommendation. But mm-hmm. this, this idea of like, I think we learn, we, you said it earlier, we learn by doing. Mm-hmm. And so I think in a way it's, it's, uh, if, if you want to do this, then learn what it takes to go get there. If you want to do that, learn what it takes to go get there. But that, that thought process of like, what is it that you want to do? And what if no one cares or judges you or even knows about it back to what we said earlier, mm-hmm. then, then what do you want to do and what do you need to learn to get there? I think that's, I think that's so empowering. And that's, that's tr- basically the thesis of our, our, you know, call it schooling, uh, with our children. Thousand percent. And one of the greatest thrills of my life, people will think, so we created this dumb character. Like I made a fake country salesman and we're playing around with a couple investors and we do like funny, stupid videos. True story. All of our videos that we do that with, and even the good real estate one we did is edited and shot by his 12 year old. And, (laughs) and, and she comes up with the music, the editing, and I paid her like it's legit. She is my video editor. She's going to, yeah, and I mean, to see the look on her face, like it's the greatest thrill in the world. And like, look at that. She's 12 years old. She's got it's, a business. So, it's so cool. Like, I don't like, I don't know if you're, she's probably on TikTok then. I don't know if you're, yes, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But like, but it's, it's, I mean, they're, 
it's it's something that I think if we can foster and lean into, we had said this earlier too, have encourage them to lean into change or lean into learning through doing with with technology as opposed to um, being sort of against technology or versus th- those situations, then um, all of a sudden we find what we're good at, what we like, we learn new things. And that, that to me is like, that's, that's winning right there. Like I want to do that for the rest of my life. Because you're cultivating a mindset within your kids that what they truly love to do doesn't revolve around a dollar amount. It revolves on, Hey, I felt good that I made dad's video and people saw it. And I think that like what greater gift can you give to your kids? So, so I love, since I love this topic so much, I'm, I'm just going to hit my, my sure. second, my second principle. Yeah. So, yeah. so, um, so I wrote about this on LinkedIn, but my parenting principles, I think number one is exactly what we said. North star should truly be like, Hey, Austin, what makes you happy? What do you need to do to, you know, to get there? And, you know, your happiness should basically be above everyone else's. Um, um, you know, with, with all respect and safety and accountability, but that accountability is the second principle, like, uh, zero entitlement, zero expectations that, um, so like with my kids, like I want them to, to go get those things, but like, I, I, I'm going to do everything in my power to not pay or pave the way for them to get those things. Mm -hmm. And so I I certainly want to arm them. I certainly want to support them in like in a loving and encouraging sort of way, but like, um, I think there are a lot of uh, I think I think actually most children of a younger generation right now are, are you know because we were such of, of such a lifetime of sort of relatively good times they they err on the side of maybe um, getting too much sort of given to them or handed or, or expected and so we we aren't we aren't as hungry or we we're, we're, we're you know especially when you're talking about schooling uh, you know you're you're expected to go from ninth grade to 10th grade and then from 10th to 11th but um you know when you have this sort of open so complete blank canvas um it becomes uh, a lot more daunting thousand percent and look you say what you want about tv but every now and there's some nuggets and i love the show entourage i always have and the greatest like little line in there was ari is talking to turtle and he says i'm going to give you the best advice i can this is he said, I've thought about this my entire life. He said, I knew that I had nothing when I grew up, and it's the reason that I got to where I'm going. And he goes, I knew that I could give my son whatever he wanted, and because I'm a little soft, I might. He goes, but then he won't be where I am because he didn't have to work for it. Yeah, and it's something I so agree with. And it's not to say that anyone with any sort of other level of, of privilege or opportunity does not have a shot or any, or shouldn't any, in any way. I think it's about having this, this, this clear, like unfiltered truth of what, it, what is it going to take uh, to get there? Um, not, you know, who's going to help me get there or, you know, I need someone to pay me or any kind of excuses, but taking extreme ownership. It's, a, it's one of my favorite books by Jocko Willink, but yes. taking, taking extreme ownership, of I, you know, that's something I want my kids to to learn and to embrace more and more as they get older. And thousand percent, I think one of the things that changed for me, and not to get off topic, but we're just talking about kids' goals and stuff. So, I think goals. I think people that people's goals, I think, are bullshit. I mean, I think that they're goals for somebody else. I live a life of intention, mm-hmm. and my intention is to be a good person to impact people. And I think when you can instill that in your kids, they remove the monetary, the, Hey, look what I did. Reward me for it. No, the intention was that you're going to learn and maybe you start a business, maybe it fails. Maybe you start another business. You know, I think one of the greatest uh, things uh, my buddy ever said, Brad Johnson, he said that, uh, why would I come on here and tell you my bio? A bio is just a bunch of bullshit I've done so you can think about it. He goes, how about I tell you my failures because that's truly who I am as a person. And I was like, that's powerful because yeah. I've had many failures. <laughs> so. As much as, as much as your intentions moving forward too, right? Cause I think even, a, even a million, you know, forgivable failures uh, can, can, it, it can be, you know, forgotten if you, if your intention moving forward is is the focus and so i like what you had said there about intention and goals like i i think in some ways goals can play maybe a sort of a micro purpose to give someone some level of focus on some direction if they're feeling you know sort of uh i think 
clouded in that way. But like, but to your point, like, um, you know, I've been guilty of obsessing over the goal and forgetting the the ultimate intention or why or purpose or direction. Um, and so I think uh, it's less about the, the those micro sort of checkpoints, but, you know, what is the direction that you're going? And the only reason I say that is because I've noticed it a little bit. Well, I can't meet my goals for 2020 because of the virus. Yeah. Who, who, yeah. Get, who gives a shit? Like, yeah. change them. Life of yeah. intention. Yeah. Yeah. Even just you saying goals for 2020 is just a good example. I think, I think if you're setting a goal on January 1st, that's probably one of the biggest indicators that it's not going to be met. But, but again, I do recognize some people operate, you know, differently and, Look, laugh, look, hack your own brain. You can yeah. do whatever you want. If you're a yeah. miracle night, then do a miracle <laughs> night. I, yeah. I know yeah. a lot of people that work better at night. I like to get up in the morning. I was a bartender for 20 years, you know? Like it's just, true. It's so true. H- hacking your own brain. Like I, 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 they're, they're, I'm even just thinking about it now. I think there, there are probably plenty of successful people that have just operated on goals. Um, but for sure, me, my story, my type is if it's important, then it'll create change today. So like, I, I think if, you know, anyone that talks to me about one day working out or something, I, the first thing I ask them is like, why not work out this afternoon? You know, so like <laughs> yeah, God, so like, you're, you're it's, me. It's just, what are we waiting for? Dude, yeah. my favorite thing to do to people, I really love to connect. How about right now? And they're like, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> dude, like, let's do it. You just said, yeah. you know, so I love it. Well, how do they find you? You're, you're providing all the value. How do they find you on Honestly. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm. I try to basically replicate everything on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. My favorite place to hang out right now is LinkedIn. In terms of like commenting, engaging, and just sort of building, um, a, you know, a little bit of uh, you know group of community and, and, and people there on a similar journey. And so, but I'm happy to reach out and talk to anyone in any sort of way, like you had just said. So like, um, I always put my phone number out there, my email. Like, like you can find me. I think. And so if there's ever, ever any way that I can ever connect or help anybody, I'm always happy to hop on a Zoom and collaborate in, in any kind of way. And like um, this, this, first of all, Austin, I want to say thank you to you because like I, it, it was six months ago that I was, I'd really not shared anything on social media other than like that, the like generic, like kind of family stuff that was very, you know, so, sort of safe and not, you know, fully me. And, you know, just so that's six months ago. So, and then I Googled how to edit, edit a video. And so mm-hmm. I still consider myself so much at the beginning of this journey of uh, being more vulnerable, communicating more at scale, meeting more relationships, having an infinite mindset of learning. Um, so I, I really appreciate connecting with you and I'll be, I'll be looking forward to like doing some, some edits and having my own fun with. Uh, I'm all about it. And we're going to send you a bunch of videos when it comes out and you can, Go away with them. Guys, if you like this episode, make sure to share it with your friends. Um, Thank you so much for coming on, Connor, and we'll see you later, bud. You got it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.